I don't. In this video, we're going to talk about aspects of Sangsu 10. So 10 has a few kind of fun things associated with it. Um, so I guess the, the first one is going to be like the terrain is allegedly a lot more specific. Um, at least when I had a conversation with, again, some other uh, masters out there. Um, so something like that, that's going to be new. But there are also new techniques, right? So 10, uh, again, has one major new concept. Um, but also it's going to be introducing uh, several new types of attacks as well. Uh, so let's take a look at the first, again, concept uh, kind of idea. So that is going to be the terrain. So again, that might sound <laughs> kind of a little bit more straightforward, but uh, the idea is like, so allegedly with this form, uh, you're fighting in, allegedly again, uh, knee-deep water. Uh, so that kind of explains why a lot of those tight spins, I also almost lost my glasses, I have a lot more tight spins, and in general you want to keep your sword again above water, and you're going to notice when we actually do do a cut that's below the, again, below the knee, we actually have to put the sword away. Uh, so, which is kind of like, so that's going to be one of our new things, right? So we actually have a, a half put away. Uh, but again, kind of combining those two ideas, right? So um, this, this is actually a very new idea, right? So a terrain. Right, so usually when we think, it's like, okay, it's a battlefield, uh, which could be, again, we, at least my mind usually gives me like a grassland kind of idea. Uh, but this is giving me a very specific thing to think about, um, and this idea pops up more specifically in types of forms. Uh, so for example, the forms that I'm learning, um, which, I, which I think I can talk about, at least in, in the vague idea. Um, so the Jembek, right, are allegedly kind of done on mountains. So, right, so you have very uneven terrain, so you always have to be very stable in your footing. Uh, that's a little bit more on the extreme side, but again, <laughs> actually the form 10 being in knee deep water is super, super specific, uh, but introduces the idea of, oh, like, like that, that will contribute uh, to, again, the way that I move throughout the world. Uh, so it's just something to keep in mind, uh, but let's take a look at that half put away. The concept in general is kind of Okay, uh, like the idea is like, oh, I can put my sword almost away halfway through a fight. But what makes it more interesting is, again, if you kind of combine that terrain uh, with this motion, right? So if you kind of like go through uh, the form in your head, right? So I usually try not to do whole forms because I could get in trouble. Um, but getting up to, let's just say, here, right? So we do a you know, hit and a strike, and we usually stop above the knee for this particular form. We're going to come up and notice I'm going to get, again, get below the knee level and cut. So now notice that would be in the water. And what do I do next? All right, I don't, I don't want seawater on my sword, so I'm actually going to take the time to clean it, ideally pretty briefly, right? Uh, but again, that's a, it is a new technique, uh, having a half put away. It does happen fairly rarely, right? So for example, in Yeto 6, uh, you also see this as well. But that's, again, a newish idea. Is like, all right, like I've, I've done enough damage to my sword uh, that I need to just make sure like it's still good, it's still in good condition for me to continue fighting. Um, which is also kind of, again, now, uh, I'm kind of realizing things as I say them. Uh, this is gonna be in conjunction with our uh, third idea, which is actually a different kind of sword motion. So we've talked about a lot of different kinds of sword motions, right? So we talked about using the false edge, the back of the sword, in order to deflect. We talked about obviously cutting uh, with the edge. We talked about thrusting, again, using the tip. We talked about uh, blocking, again, with the strong of the sword, again, the top third of it. Uh, we talked about deflections, using the middle of it. So what else do we have? Uh, so that what's actually happening with this one is uh, what, uh, again, what Master Kim calls the hit. Uh, so you're not quite cutting a target, you're just trying to hit their sword or hit something out of the way. Uh, so kind of leading up to that spin that I already showed you, so it actually shows you uh, less of the form. Uh, so here, I'm actually going to just hit. I'm going to hit something. Again, so in that case, the blade angle actually doesn't matter, uh, or in that case, it actually should not be singing, per se, right? Because I'm trying to hit something out of the way without damaging my sword. So hit, cut. Right? That's also going to be a bigger um, kind of idea in the next form as well. Uh, but yeah, so we're here, so we're hitting, 
we're cutting, and then we do our nice, fun uh, kill shot. So notice now kind of putting those three together, right? So first of all, I did a new motion with my sword. I'm hitting as opposed to cutting, which has a visceral different feel, right? Um, as well as now it's introduced to uh, either seawater or again, bloodied water maybe, um, just tainted water in general. Um, so now I kind of need like, like mid form, like, all right, I just hit something with this. There's seawater on it. Maybe it's not seawater, maybe it's like lake water. I just want to make sure everything's good. All right, and then we'll continue to form, right? Uh, so it's just kind of interesting uh, that these three things kind of like all come together um, in this very unique way. So those are three things to think about for uh, number 10, right? So they're all sort of interlinked, right? Uh, when I was, again, developing these ideas, they weren't that closely linked, but now that I'm kind of saying them out loud, they are, right? Uh, because again, taking that pause in the middle of a form, right? Is that a new idea? No, right? So for example, whenever you go into defense, uh, you're supposed to take that breather, right? So allegedly all forms, you're pretty much like go, go, go until you're in the defense, right? So you're only exhaling uh, between defenses. When you're in the defense, you're allowed to breathe, right? Okay, well that might mean, so for example, if we take something like, you know, from seven, uh, right, we just did a cut, fall through, defense, right? So this is our time to pause. We can maybe even use that time to briefly <laughs> inspect, right? So for the similar reason why we do like a, a half put away, kind of like maybe just inspect it a little more closely, you can still inspect your sword or inspect, again, whatever's going on, again, the battlefield, uh, what you're doing, again, what your opponent's doing, in a defense, right? Um, so again, that idea is not necessarily brand new, although the half put away is. And now that we talked about terrain, right? So terrain is super specific uh, to this form, right? Okay, uh, is it also specific for other forms? Uh, would the terrain change the way we move? Absolutely, right? Uh, so this is actually one thing that I've, I've had difficulty in the past, kind of like teaching it with, again, um, not quite an open mind, but like, it's almost like paradoxical, right? Uh, so for example, the slide versus the rolling step when you're advancing uh, forward, right? So I'm gonna move back so you can actually see my feet. The idea is, should I shuffle forward this way? which is very reminiscent of uh, Kendo, for example, or, or many Japanese uh, sword martial arts. Again, uh, the reason I'm bringing that up is because that is uh, where I learned that very specific idea uh, versus something that's a little more natural is that kind of rolling step. So notice my heel and it kind of like rolls forward. So you might be wondering, okay, which one's right, right? Uh, the answer is obviously gonna be both. Both are right, right? Uh, for very specific situations. Uh, so think about the context of, again, most kendo matches, uh, many like yaido uh, performances and stuff like that. Where do they take place? On very, very even, consistent terrain, right? Uh, so I actually know this from experience because when we try to do a demo uh, for kendo when we are in the grassy area, we immediately had to shift our, our footwork so it was a little more rolling so we wouldn't trip over clumps of grass. Uh, it was more clumpy grass as opposed to kind of like a nice turf kind of idea. That's the thing, right? So uh, even something as early as form one. Form one, I usually teach push, push, as opposed to that rolling step because that push is working on uh, muscle activation, doing all sorts of things, right? Versus that roll step is a little more foot oriented as opposed to whole body oriented. Obviously it can be both, right? Uh, but when I tell someone to push a little bit more, it activates the, again, the core, the glutes a little bit more. But that said, uh, if you kind of, if you're, if, you, if you're taught how to push first, right? Your body's gonna naturally switch to this rolling step, right? But that's because of, again, terrain change, right? So again, both ideas are true and both ideas are good. It just depends on where you are. Uh, which is again a nice uh, callback uh, to what's going on in Form 10. And likewise, you can probably think about previous examples where you can maybe consider what you did as a cut, a hit, right? Uh, 
So you can maybe think about, like again, I, I actually used this in the previous video, uh, with that the ending cut in Sanctum 2 where I kind of like strike out uh, probably to the knee, right? So maybe that's more of a hit. Maybe I'm just trying to like get someone out of the way or maybe like someone's advancing, I'm just trying to get you out, you know, to back off. Maybe there are other aspects, maybe different parts of different forms that you're more hitting something than you are really cutting the thing. Um, and then you can also, again, take, again, uh, take the flip side, right? So why do I want to hit something when I could cut it, right? Um, so again, like, keep throwing those ideas around in your head, and it'll give you, again, a, a much more, you know, textured and nuanced understanding of your forms. So with that, so make sure you keep training, stay humble, and stay safe. I don't.